Yep, you're seeing that right. I'm playing on the Virtual Boy. But don't worry, it's made by Atlas. You know the people who've made a significant amount of RPG games, I think? Well, I know they're responsible for one significant one. And welcome to Jack Bros. Hello, everyone. My Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Turn back to Jordan, don't seem ugly. Like, my name's Ultra Ultimus, and welcome to Jack Bros. This is a uh, dungeon s crawler thing. I don't know what you call it. A uh, little uh, top-down uh, crawler, I think. I don't know what you call it. Uh, uh, based off of the Atlas series. I know for a fact that this is based off one of the Atlas series' long-standing reign of games, because... Um, one of those characters, the uh, snowman character, I know for a fact I've seen before. And yes, this is in fact a small little series I'm doing. Kind of like the, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Mac and Joe and, uh, oh wait, let me read this quick. October 31st, Halloween. The day of the year when fairies can enter the human world. Or specifically these fairies. Fairies everywhere come to play with children and get into mischief. Children and fairies look forward to this day. Because, you know, Halloween. This commotion continues until late into the night. I want you to keep an eye on my character. Before long, it is 11 o'clock at night. Halloween will be over soon and the mortal to the world of fairies will soon close. The fairies have all gone home, except for Jack Lantern, the character I picked. However, Jack was having such a good time that he forgot about the time. Fairies who do not return home in time lose their power and disappear. Will Jack make it home in time? What do you think? If... But... This is the character Pixie. What are you doing? It's time for you to go home. Uh, she'll reveal herself later. I live here so I'm okay. Well, technically, you are. Jack, if you're not home in time, you'll disappear forever. So what's the difference between me as a fairy and you as a fairy? You're hopeless, Jack, but I'll show you the way home. It's a bit dangerous, though. Yeah, because, you know, I'll go with you, so don't worry. Yes, because going through the way my brothers came is definitely not an option. I have to go the long and treacherous way. Forest of fairies. But anyway, yeah, this game was uh, made... I know for a fact it's part of a series, at least in terms of the characters are based on a series. Collect... Uh, and I'll just talk about whatever else I'm talking about the gameplay in a second. But that's basically the premise of the game. A character from, um, I think Shemigami Tensei, I think? Um, you can read the text. I'll just talk over it. Because there's a lot of text in this game. Um, Shemigami Tensei, I believe, is the game this is sort of based off of. Also, I'm getting, uh, also in this part, I'm getting used to controls. But also, you may have noticed that... Yeah, I didn't really, like, play the game and have audio or, uh, what do you call it, a f video log for it. So I kind of just went through the entire game myself. So, uh, I want you to keep that in mind. There's no audio commentary, just, uh, what do you call it, this is post-commentary, basically. But anyway, the Shin Megami Tensei series has a lot of characters, and I know for a fact there's a monster that's a snowman, and that's Jack Frost. Or at least that's what they call him here. So, I think that's, that's something, at least. Um, but yeah, I decided to play this game purely because, well, I thought it would be interesting to play. It's, I, I, I thought I would have just done a long one shot of it, but then I decided, hey, why not split it into three episodes? Because it seems like as if it could be spread out to those lengths. Uh, the, um, I really don't know. It seemed like a good idea at the time, and in all honesty, I got enough footage for three episodes, so, you know, hey, it sort of worked out. Um,. The whole concept game gameplay is that it's a top-down shooter sort of thing where you have to move around in a maze-like labyrinth until you get to a boss. Yeah, the, and she's explaining it right now. This is the enemy's life meter. Yeah, at the bottom right screen you'll see the enemy's life meter. Uh, but each enemy is different and also uh, the game also revolves around certain aspects, some puzzle aspects, but you really need to move as fast as you can through this game because of the time limit because it'll run out and you'll lose automatically and you have to restart at the very beginning of the stage again. Um, the stars themselves, I didn't understand what they did, but they're basically uh, screen clearers that help you destroy certain things. But if you keep them around you, they give you more uh, time at your next, um, what do you call it? On your next uh, go. 
So that's about it. Uh, the orbs that you saw flying around me, the crystal balls, they take up one hit and somewhat take a while before they dissipate. But they're pretty useful, so I suggest getting them as much as you can. Kill all the enemies, basically, so that way they can drop stuff. They can either drop extra time or the orb things, or even a speed boost potion, which makes you invincible for a bit. I might read some of these other uh, texts that come up, I don't know. Look out for Tomcats. She'll attack you when you least expect it, so be on your guard. Yeah, yeah, uh, she, uh, the art style isn't really, it's like chibi style sort of thing, it's small, but by god, do they try to sexualize the cat a lot, because, uh, I don't know, in, in later parts they do that. Sorry about the slowdown as well. I don't know why it's doing that, this is just a virtual boy game. By the way, yes, the screen is in fact orange for you, not red, because I didn't want to do red. But I decided to make it like a black and white orange uh, color over because I thought it would look good, at least for the holiday, like, it looked like a holiday aesthetic. And I picked jack o lantern because he was honestly the only character I could pick at the moment. Well, I'd say I picked him just because I thought, hey, jack o lantern and Halloween makes sense, right? Oh, jeez. Sorry about it, that. Watch out for traps. At first I didn't see them because I can't really see much when it's regular Game Boy game uh, what do you call it virtual uh, virtual boy and uh, despite like the virtual boys track lineup of being a stupid video game console or at least in its sense like oh my god it look it, it really wasn't really meant for anything and it's a big headache uh, literally it actually had a few games that were actually pretty decent like uh, this game for example and a couple of other ones like Wario Land which I'm gonna be playing at some point in the future but uh, this game is actually pretty decent, if only because it's like, oh hey, it's pretty quick, easy, it's not that bad. And uh, the only issue really is that it's on Virtual Boy. It, it could have worked as a Game Boy or Game Boy Advance kind of game. At least Game Boy Advance, I think. So I don't know. What else? She's an elf that shoots arrows at you. She only points in one direction and fires in that one direction. She doesn't turn towards you as soon as you're on her level. So keep that in mind. And if you get hit by enemies, you lose uh, points. I kind of just like went through the motions with this game, so I didn't really know what I was doing most of the time. I didn't know I was invincible, so literally I was just like, oh crud, what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, there's certain enemies that I will talk about afterwards. Slimes are pretty easy to fight. Cat girls will, as soon as they see you, they will immediately charge towards you, so be careful there. Um... The, oh, I used up my screen clear thing right there, so, you know. Uh, the goblin guys drop bombs wherever they go, so be careful there. And the objective is get as many keys as you can. Usually there's some other side objective or some different stuff you have to do, so keep that in mind as you play this game. And also you can move boulders, which is pretty okay. Boulders can block projectiles or pathways, so be careful when you move them, like she said. Because you could get yourself stuck somewhere. Which is pretty much an issue here and there. You see, it can block uh, projectiles. I will say this much. I love the hyper potions because, oh my god, they're so much fun to get. I just love blitzing through enemies. While you're in this invincible state, you can destroy anything. Sinister Scar, or what? Scar stops moving out. You'll be attacked by Snakehead. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Oh, right, I remember this one. Uh... Is he? Yep, yep, he's in fact the thing I was thinking of. Yeah, I just used... I just used up my screen clear because I did not think of anything. I just... I was like, nope, I'm not dealing with it. And the, the, the next level I kind of got a handicap because I didn't get many points and I thought I was doomed. So, uh, yeah. That was the skull head. That was literally a few seconds. I... You can cheat a boss out with those things, but I suggest saving as many stars as you can for the final boss of the final level. And as you can tell by the video, it's like, what do you call it? Temple of Nightmare. I didn't complete the game in one uh, in this episode. I'll complete it in another, another episode. This is a three-parter because I just wanted to split it up to make the videos at least somewhat semi-even. And I sort of did, but eh, not by much. They're decent in length, but not great as a whole, you know? Oh, these things are annoying. Uh, these things supposedly are timing, and I think what you're supposed to do is immediately try to trick them 
into going out like you know you go forward and back and they immediately just you know what's the word they just immediately get tricked and while they're resetting you can uh what do you call it uh go in between them as they uh, just go away but now nah, I decided to just speed run them through because uh, speed run through them because I thought that's what it's supposed to do those things are warp tiles you can warp anywhere that has those similar tiles or back up to a, a first level I suggest only ever using those uh, for certain other little places not all the time is that might waste time uh, so I kept my eye out on what I'm supposed to be doing and try not my try not to do anything because most of the tiles that they do they just send you up back up a level once unless there's another porter portal on that level then it sends you to that portal but either way it's kind of frustrating uh, the way this game controls is that uh, you move with the directional pads but you fire with another form of directional pads either that or the button pads I don't know I don't know how the virtual boys uh, button layout is but uh, certain buttons I used yeah they were they were my other control scheme so you know uh, whatever direction I press for those certain buttons that's where the virtual boy would uh, you know basically just point in that direction <clears throat> and uh, so you know if you want to shoot backwards that's cool that's basically what you have to do uh, the, the issue I guess with this particular game is that it has certain uh, what do you call it slowdown issues I guess but that's just uh, the emulator itself oh these things mystical morgans are just disappearing reappearing enemies that shoot you once you can kill them, you can kill them, it's just they're a bit hard to, what do you call it, track down, like, oh hey, trying to hit them once is a bit of a pain. But you can kill them, so it's a possibility. Like, I, I, I'm trying to kill all the enemies I can because if you do kill an enemy, they will drop, like, uh, massive, any specific items, either time, uh, the orbs like I talked about or uh, uh, invincibility potions which are very useful let's see oh yeah the knights the furin uh, these guys you can't hit from the front you have to go at them, at them from the side or behind and s I mainly killed a few of them by going through the uh, through behind uh, speaking of behind this was this was kinda what I was talking about the the Tomcats are obviously females because they say she, and they have a defined butt feet, butt for some reason. I don't know why. Like seriously, I don't know why the Toms have like this defined butt when they're pointed in the other, like behind the player model. I don't get it. I will say that the time limit, uh, this is kind of like the time limit is somewhat indicated, uh, sort of like a. Like, whether or not you go through a whole level in 100 seconds, I kind of doubt it without taking damage. I kind of doubt it. You could without any extra points, so... It's kind of RNG-based whether or not you're going to get any points at all. And that's basically what they're trying to tell you. You have to try and... Oh, these things are important. You have to get them. It's kind of RNG-based whether or not you're going to get any items at all from an enemy, or whether or not you'll get uh, speed potions or time at all, so... You know, you're kind of effed there. I don't know, it just feels like if you could, I sh you know, essentially just lose, lose. But there's not really too much of a penalty for dying, dying. Um, it's sort of like an arcade sort of thing. But thankfully, you just have to, like, get to the end. You just have to, what do you call it? Um, you just get restarted to the beginning of the um, stage you were on. So, I guess it's fair there. And nope, I did not learn a thing from my other previous times. And I just went straight for it. He's like, you see, like, I got items from those guys, but last time I didn't. It's like, oh hey, it's random base, so you gotta be careful with that. Ah. <clears throat> I'll say this much about the game. It's decent on its own, and I think if they made a series that was a little bit better, I think it would've been fun. And I'm pretty sure, like, there's other games like this, I'm pretty sure, but... Heck if I know what they are because like I I I don't know many games like this. I, I'm pretty sure I do know I do I do I do I do know most games that are kind of like this, but unfortunately I really can't think of them specifically because of 
Well, I'm kind of a simple-minded person. I don't know much about, like, what do you call it? I don't know much about geology. Uh, the French are true. No, no, I just don't know much about, uh, specific, um, game mechanics, uh, uh, acts of gameplay and certain other things in certain gameplay. He's like, while I am a fan of like uh, certain genres and I know specific genres, I'm not like uh, uh, what do you call it a specific uh, guru or master of knowing every single little detail of a video game. It's it's pretty like what do you call it difficult to confuse certain genres. And sometimes certain games feel like as if there are other types of games, despite you know being uh, completely not the game you think they are. For example, um, some some people sort like for me, I kind of thought Advanced War was a uh, turn-based RPG, but it's a strategy-based like RTS, real sort of RTS. And certain other games also sort of baffle me and think like, oh, that's not what they are. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, like, you know, you you have to be like that in order to understand certain games. It's just a little bit, you know, a little bit confusing for certain titles. But other than that, they're fine. By the way, those balloons, or poltergeists as they're called, they're important because they give you a lot of good stuff. Or they just give you extra time, which is very good. They will not stay in your line of sight, so you have to. You have to go towards them and corner them into a specific area. If you uh, do, you get extra time, a lot of extra time, such as uh, 50 seconds, I think, for each ghost you or poltergeist you kill. And they're very helpful, but at the same time, you have to go traveling around and actually catching them. So be careful when you're doing that, because you really don't want to, you know, be sort of stuck in a particular precarious position. If you want to get extra time, they're worth going after. But, uh, yeah, I suggest, like, trying to find them as fast as you can when you have extra time, so that way you can have extra, extra time. Although the extra time you get doesn't really, like, uh, add up, I guess, to your overall score. Or add on. Oh, yeah, and I'm facing a vampire. This one's a lot more difficult than the other two bosses because he actually employs something different. The ground moves and he fires off bats towards you. By the way, you may be hearing a song um, that's playing in the background. Yeah, you you all know what song this is. And yes, it is in fact necessary for this particular moment. Heck, I might do a one shot of uh, a Castlevania 2 if you all might know that. This particular series is just gonna be like a uh, well, not a one-off series. It's gonna be not really alongside Castlevania either. It's gonna play after Castlevania. So maybe I did play, uh, what do you call it, uh, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, um, purely just because, at some point, I don't know. I could be wrong, I could be right, whatever. All I do know is that, for this game entirely, this boss needed something like Castlevania-esque music, because it feels like as if I'm fighting Dracula. At least in terms of being difficult, Jesus. This is a little bit difficult in terms of everything else, but if you employ enough strategy, you'll win. And trust me, you will. But that's the end of this particular episode of Jack Bros. And, uh, well, you'll be seeing the next episode of Jack Bros. at some point. There's a little bit of a message I have at the very end, so keep in mind in that. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all next time for the next video. Until then, sign on, my bots. Take care, and happy Halloween! Get ready for the month of Game of Ween. Ooh.